Good afternoon. I'm Lieutenant Joseph Noslik, the Assistant Public Information Officer for Kenosha County's Emergency Management Joint Information Center. We're back again this Friday with this week's top 10 most frequently asked questions. This week, overwhelmingly, uh, the questions are more geared towards the Kenosha County Division of Health. But before I turn it over to them, there is one point that I would like to reiterate to the citizens of the City of Kenosha and Kenosha County. Yes, essential businesses do remain open. However, if you don't have to leave your home, please don't. Plan ahead. Limit your trips to the grocery store. Select a single member from your family to run the errands that you need for your home. Stay safe and stay healthy. I'd like to welcome Amanda Tura from our Kenosha County's Division of Health. Amanda? Thank you, Lieutenant Joe. I am Amanda Tura, a public health nurse with Kenosha County Division of Health, and today I will be answering your health-related questions. Question one, how long should a business be shut down if an employee were to test positive with COVID-19? Businesses are not required to shut down due to a positive result from an employee. Businesses should continue to promote social distancing, frequent hand washing, and other good hygienic practices such as coughing or sneezing into your sleeve. Employees need to stress to employers, employers need to stress to employees that if you are not feeling well, you should stay home, even if your symptoms are mild. Number two, hearing that the president has extended to 30 days now, is it possible for things to return to normal around May-ish? Unfortunately, Kenosha County Health Department is unable to predict the future. Looking at the current trend of the COVID-19 virus, the Midwest appears to be about three weeks behind the East Coast. There are many factors that are involved with the spread of the virus. The best practice for everyone is to continue to follow social distancing, frequent hand washing, and good cough and sneeze hygiene. Most importantly, you should stay home to avoid contact with other people to help reduce further spread of the COVID-19 virus. Number three. My landlord is planning an inspection for pests in all of the townhouses. Is this legal or safe at this time? According to emergency order number 12, landlords or rental property managers shall avoid entering leased residential premises until emergency maintenance is required. Question four. There have been conflicting information about the use of Advil, Advil if you contract COVID-19. The answer is continually changing from yes, it's okay to use, to no, don't use it. Is there a definitive answer on this topic? Also, what about plain old aspirin? This warning was initially given for those diagnosed with COVID-19. Currently, there is no scientific evidence linking over-the-counter use of ibuprofen to the aggravation of COVID-19 virus. There is not a definitive answer, however, and as we learn more about the virus, this answer may change. As always, use of any prescribed or over-the-counter medication should be in consultation with your primary care provider. Question five. Is a blood test available in southeastern Wisconsin to check for antibodies to indicate that someone already has had COVID-19? To the best of our knowledge, the health systems in the southeastern area of Wisconsin do not have this test available for commercial use. Initial work to develop a serology test for COVID-19 is underway at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC. In order to develop the test, the CDC needs blood samples from people who had COVID-19 at least 21 days after their symptoms first started. Researchers are currently working to develop the basic parameters for the test, which will be refined as more samples become available. Once the test is developed, CDC will need additional samples to evaluate whether the test works as intended. Number six, please address the levels of testing for COVID-19. According to the federal government's testing guidelines, there are three levels of priority for testing. Priority one, this level ensures optimal care options for all hospitalized patients, lessen the risk of healthcare associated infections, and maintain the integrity of the U.S. healthcare system. Individuals who fall into priority one include hospitalized patients and healthcare facility workers with symptoms. Priority two, this level ensures that 
Those at highest risk of, compl of complication of infection are rapidly identified and appropriately triaged. Individuals who fall into priority two include patients in long-term care facilities with symptoms, patients 65 years of age and older with symptoms, patients with underlying conditions with symptoms, and first responders with symptoms. Priority three, this level, as resources allow, test individuals in the surrounding community of rapidly increasing hospital cases to decrease community spread and ensure health of essential workers. Individuals who fall into priority three include critical infrastructure workers with symptoms, individuals who do not meet any of the above categories with symptoms, healthcare facility workers and first responders, individuals with mild symptoms in communities experiencing high numbers of COVID-19 hospitalizations. Number seven, how true is it that people over 60 are at risk for developing COVID? While it has been well publicized that older adults and those with underlying health conditions are at greater risk of developing severe illness from COVID-19, it is important to understand that people of every age are at risk of getting infected with the virus and spreading it to others. As of April 2nd, 78% of COVID-19 cases in Kenosha County are under the age of 60 and 28% are under the age of 40. Question eight, how long does the COVID-19 virus live on surfaces such as cardboard, plastic, or other hard surfaces? A National Institute of Health study found that the virus which causes COVID-19 survives on cardboard up to 24 hours and up to two to three days on plastic and stainless steel surfaces. The findings suggest that the virus might last this long on surfaces such as door handles, plastic coated or laminated worktops, and other hard surfaces. The researchers did find, however, that copper surfaces tend to kill the virus in about four hours. Research has shown that coronaviruses can be inactivated within a minute by disinfecting surfaces with 62 to 71 percent alcohol, or 0.5 percent hydrogen peroxide bleach, or household bleach containing 0.1% sodium hypochlorite. The findings of this study again affirm the guidance from public health professionals to use precautions similar to those for influenza and other respiratory viruses in an effort to spread, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Recommendations to prevent the spread of the virus include avoid close contact with people who are sick, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, stay home when you are sick, Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash. And clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces using a regular household cleaning spray or wipe. Number nine, would it be possible to post information regarding the locations within the county of those testing positive? There is a new dashboard page available on the kenoshacounty.org website. The locations of those testing positive will be added to that page soon, but only by census track. It will not provide any protected health information that could be deemed identifying. Thank you everyone for your excellent questions related to COVID-19. Stay healthy and be safe. Take care everybody.